Hey friends, in preparation for next season, I am deleting a lot of stuff out of my vault. This is the first time that I think I've hit a tipping point when it comes to playing the game and making content for the game. As a content creator, I have to hold on to roles for testing purposes and specific video purposes. Um, I think the best way to illustrate Destiny's terrible RNG is to show the frozen orbit. The chance of seeing any permutation of this gun is just astronomically low. So if, for example, I am hunting the specific role of snapshot sights, auto letting holster, any perk here, any perk here, any masterwork, I haven't seen it and I play a lot of PvP. But let's say that there's a now niche role for content creation, like high impact reserves with I don't think clown cartridge makes, well, maybe clown cartridge would work for that, right? Because it increases the mag size, which then allows for high impact reserves to proc faster. Then appended mag or extended mag, whatever gives me the biggest total, doesn't matter. And then a reload masterwork. Okay, so the whole purpose of a gun like this would be to use a very, very specific perk combination to body shot people in PvP. Is this something I'm going to do every day? No, but as a content creator, I want to document it and let you guys know how effective it is. So if you run across a similar rule, you know to keep it. And so for that reason, a content creator's vault fills up a lot. I'm also a veteran Destiny player. I have played since day one hour zero of Destiny 2, back in the double primary meta, which is why you see me hold on to trophy weapons such as this Allegro or Anio or even this Aachen. And yes, this Aachen is the same as you find in the collection, but the difference is, I know for a fact, that this is the Aachen I used in your one tournament play, so for that reason, I can't part with it. And if you're wondering, like, well, your vault's just full of trophies, I started labeling stuff in my vault so we can visualize exactly how many trophies I hold on to, exactly how many PvP best in slots I hold on to, exactly how many test weapons I hold on to. So 29 test weapons, 22 trophies, 100 PvP weapons, 51 PvP best in slots. Uh, notice that these don't discriminate between sunset and not sunset, it's just best in slot. Because the competitive playlist doesn't care if you show up with Provoker and Recluse a year from now, 10 years from now. You're going to be able to use those in the comp playlist. I don't think that should be the case, but it is. So anyway, let's start going through my junk. These are the things that I mark for deletion, even though on paper a lot of these have merit. I finally hit that tipping point as a player where I say I'm just going to use what I enjoy, not worry about testing, not worry about niche combinations as much, and I guess I'll ask around on Twitter to borrow an account for a specific niche playstyle, maybe put out a shopping list at the start of a season of interactions I'm curious about, and if anybody builds it before me, I will credit them the best I can, um, because it's just unsustainable to do myself. So let's go through all this junk. First, let's show off the vault. Let's go PvP best in slots first. Here we have a max range Antioch D, max range Ostringer, an Astral Horizon that is legacy, meaning that you cannot get this combination anymore. A max range explosive better devils. A breach light with both multi kill clip and Vorpal weapon. A Kremil's dagger with kill clip, meaning that it is one of two 120 RPM hand cannons that can roll with kill clip that are not sunset. A max range fate ringer with killing wind. A go figure that is a aggressive. Burst Pulse Rifle, 4 Burst, Max Range. A Max Handling Heritage with perks that boost range to offset that handling. You could say, but there's a range cap. However, range is accuracy at the end of the day. So, I want to crank that up as much as I can. And I get the best of both worlds. I really don't feel like I need Assault Mag to get multi-kills. Or to follow up a missed shot. Nightshade. Alright, so this is, I marked this as rare because it's a rare perk combo. You have a lightweight frame plus moving target. You don't see that every day on a pulse rifle, especially a pulse rifle with kill clip because it's at the exact 
tipping point on a damage uh, amount where it will exactly two burst, which is nuts. So this perk combination is extremely lethal and extremely rare, although this archetype overall is not. These two perks solve this archetype. And for that reason, I could never delete a Nightshade. In fact, if you would believe it, on console, Nightshade is my most used weapon because in year one, I used to use Fighting Lion plus Nightshade, and that got me the majority of the kills. Uh, back in that time, we did not have random rolls, so I used a different Nightshade that I took a screenshot of and then deleted. I don't keep every trophy, I just keep most of them. This parcel of Stardust at the time was min-max tested to show you the exact amount of threat detector you needed for one proc a threat detector while still maintaining the most range on a lightweight frame. Lately, full choke is the answer on these shotguns and this also has that. So while it's not a max handling parcel, it's a good min-max parcel that has a good mix of range and handling. Same thing on this Reese Walker. Surplus, full choke, handling masterwork. It's fantastic. I use it on stasis classes a lot because they're more opt to freeze an opponent and then pick up a melee off of that freeze. This is a spare rations, snapshot sights, kill clip, and max handling. In a recent TWAB, they said they are nerfing or fixing the quick swap a bug. So you can no longer sprint swap and cancel the animation. As a result, handling on a hand cannon is going to matter a lot more because handling is your time to kill. If you snipe somebody and then switch to a hand cannon for a cleanup, the faster handling, you, uh, faster handling stat you have on both weapons equates to a faster time to kill. So weapons like these I do think are best in slot because for the explicit purpose of snipe body cleanup, this is the best. This is a anonymous autumn. This lightweight sidearm seems to outperform others like it, and for that reason, I keep it. It is kill clip with outlaw, but it also has quick draw in case I ever want to swap to that. This gnawing hunger is a double perk gnawing hunger with drop mag, so it fulfills both PvE and PvP. We're going to revisit this gnawing hunger when we talk about PvE. This is a max handling Jack Queen King with demolitionist, swashbuckler, and ricochet rounds. It's almost, Ricochet Rounds, by the way, is very valuable for a play style with Bottom Tree Arc Strider. But it's almost like I saw the future when I kept a roll like this. Like, I knew they were going to nerf Quick Draw, nerf uh, Quick Swapping, all those things. Handling has always been amazing. It's just range was the most obviously good perk on a hand cannon. And we had the Vault Space back then to just collect all the different rolls. So, we did. Here we have a Rangefinder Explosive Kindled Orchid. While it doesn't have the most range sight, I think that going Fluted Barrel is the right min-max on this gun. Therefore, it does become a best in slot because Palindrome cannot roll Rangefinder and Explosive rounds. Kindled Orchid with Kill Clip Rampage. You can't get this anymore. Have to keep it. Beloved, Snapshot, and Moving Target, and the highest range I can get minus Full Bore. It is good enough to keep because chances are I will not find a replacement snipe at 40 zoom and you never know. There might be another snipe in the future that comes at 40 zoom that makes me want to commit to that zoom level which means that Beloved is free to use in the competitive playlist and it being one of the biggest stat monsters of all sniper rifles. A zoom A may be edging it out but 50 zoom, I'm going to keep it. Martyr's Retribution. I min-max this one because if I remember right, the blast radius or velocity doesn't change the damage. You just go all velocity and you just shoot it at the floor. Yeah, it's a good gun. Uh, works with like Kepri's Horn and other solar builds, so I keep it. This is my OG Beloved with Quick Draw Snapshot. You can't really get this sight, so at this point, this becomes more of a test weapon for me. Quick Draw nerf and... Sprint cancel nerf, uh, swap cancel nerfed. So, yeah, this is still going to be very, very good. Maybe better than the moving target one. Again, I'm just waiting on a 40 zoom snipe to make me say that these are legal again. I should just expand on that a little bit more here. I like to snipe on both the kinetic and energy slot to be the exact same zoom, exact same handling, and exact same perks. That way, no matter what combination of weapons I'm using, my most lethal weapon, the sniper rifle, 
is the most tuned to my muscle memory. This is a min-max bone chiller. I recently picked this up and it is fantastic. Thick aim assist stat of 61. This is a borrowed time. Remember how I showed you the frozen orbit having 12 perks down each row? Borrowed time is exactly like that. So the chance of getting rangefinder, which adds to the zoom, which makes it more consistent overall, more lethal overall. Rangefinder is a must on this gun and getting it with like a range booster magazine and the highest range scope is amazing. I also got Frenzy and a Stability Masterwork. While I'm not excited about the Stability Masterwork, Frenzy is amazing. Uh, this is a go-to PvP option for me because of how lethal it is. A 0.67 time to kill at those ranges. The 25 to 27 meter mark. It can do those. This is a Catalyst Mini Tool. You can no longer reobtain them. And they do work with the Mida Synergy. Same with the barbecue drink as Wormy calls it. This one is quick draw swash and quick draw makes so much sense on Sturm and Dring because you're constantly swapping between both weapons. Swashbuckler is arguably the best combo because melee is going to supplement what you're missing with a shotgun. And then callous mini tool you keep it because moving target on the biggest movement buff in the game. And we don't know what kind of things in the future we're going to get that add to movement speed. Like this on Peacekeepers, you've never seen faster movement, I promise. Here we have the Aaron Tool with hip fire grip and backup plan. This is more of a test weapon, although it does come up in the competitive playlist sometimes if I'm hanging around Stadia. Fusion rifles are really good on Stadia. This is an Exile's Curse that you can no longer reobtain. Uh, let me make sure I type legacy here to remind myself. Chambered Compensator, Stability, Firmly Planted for Stability, Multi-Kill Clip to reduce bolts to kill, and Liquid Coils with Particle Repeater just in case that in the future, uh, these Fusion Rifle changes we're getting tomorrow might make Particle Repeater the more consistent option. We'll see. This is my best Frozen Orbit. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. No distractions, Snapshot, Arrowhead Break, and then Alloy Magazine for faster reloading. And I do want to hold out for auto-loading holster because I find with my, let's say, tempo I play with my team as well as my ability usage, I like using my abilities rather than spending that same time to reload my guns so I could be freezing an enemy with stasis while my gun is reloading in the background so that by the time the freeze catches, I'm ready, reloaded, uh, knock them out, get my bonuses, and move on. I seriously play that fast that I value those reload perks. A Horus Least, I called this the Inverse Redrix because it essentially gives you the same playstyle, although this is more resilience bound, but easier to use. I wish this had high caliber rounds, but Armor Piercing surprisingly comes up on this gun, and it also has the best three sights. This is a Igneous Hammer that is min-max to perfection. Sometimes you don't want a range master work here because it gives you less of the stat total where it matters because you get diminishing returns on range. So I'm actually very happy I got handling because I'm also going to go probably corkscrew rifling. So it's just going to be an overall stat monster. It's going to get more handling range whenever I get a kill and it always has snapshot. I have to reiterate with all those handling changes and the sprint swap cancel change, guns like these are going to start rising up again. I also like my sniper rifles, like to keep snapshot primaries the same in each slot. So until I get a 120 with snapshot, maybe like this. Let me just show you how I organize this. I try to keep two very similar weapons. Since I've been enjoying Fatebringer lately more than Palindrome, I have a Fatebringer and a Waking Vigil. Because if I pull a Palindrome, my Palindrome doesn't have high cows, my Waking Vigil does. And my palindrome with high cows has rangefinder, which my fate bringer doesn't. I like keeping my primaries flush between each so that I am ready to swap on a moment's notice with less muscle memory adjustment. It may sound weird, but it gets results. It works for me. Okay, retro futurist. Full choke, max range, quick draw swash. Comes up with stasis, a lot of meleeing. A hey, shit, this one's going to impress you. Shayura's Wrath. I have farmed every Trials weekend for this SMG, and this is the closest I've got to the Antiope. 
it's really good. If I could have got a handling masterwork here and a Acherize rounds here, it would have been a much better total. Obviously, I want max range too, but we'll take what we can get. That is honestly the closest to perfect. I will take it. I can make that work. A Soul Survivor with Snapshot Opening Shot. Ricochet Rounds as well. Ricochet Rounds on a Snipe is extremely rare. So for that reason alone you keep it. But also the combo of Snapshot Opening Shot on a Sniper Rifle. It's absolutely nuts. It also has Fluted Barrel to help that handling. The Keening is getting deleted because although it is the best permutation of this Adaptive Frame. Unfortunately, Drang provides more zoom which makes the gun overall easier and more consistent. It's hand cannon zoom essentially. This is a palindrome that is statted out to the point where if you were, if you use hammer forge rifling, you do not have to compensate for recoil at all on your mouse and can just three tap at a lethal three tap distance. If you have full bore without a stability masterwork at your three tap distance, you have to adjust for recoil. Now, I didn't farm for this specifically. I just took the best that I could get. However, I make uh, lemonade out of lemons. This isn't a perfect roll, but I found the use case where it is better than the best roll on paper, right? Same thing on this one. This one has a stab masterwork going for small bore here. Hits 78 handling. And at that lethal distance, I do not have to recoil compensate. And it also has quick draw. This will be my daily driver if we can get some sort of like fate bringer type gun with rangefinder in the future. Then a trinary system adaptive frame fusion with firmly planted high impact reserves to tip it to that. Uh, is it an exact five bolt kill? I think that's the one which makes it super consistent. A Doomsday Launcher, the reason it's as rare is because Threat Detector rarely pops up with full court, which makes it so that Proxy Grenades doesn't have a negative. Normally Proxy Grenades doesn't one shot, but with full court being even like at slightly medium distance, it's going to one shot. Threat Detector is active even when the gun has no ammo, so you can use it to set up Gemini Jesters or Dynamo on a Rift or something like that. Hammerhead I kept with quick draw for the explicit purpose of using it with Fighting Lion. However, I am not really enjoying using machine guns as often. And I personally feel busted when I use Fighting Lion. Like, it just makes the game very easy. Maybe the nerf will make me use it more, but we'll see. The point is, I'm just not enjoying using this gun, so I'm just going to delete it. I have an Avalanche that is not Sunset, legal to use. Ricochet rounds. It's going to do just fine. And I will eventually farm out a corrective measure that does the job. This Blasta 2 is my daily driver and my most used current PvP power weapon. 900 kills on it, Disruption Break, and Proxy Nades. My thought is with Disruption Break, if Proxy Nade doesn't exactly kill, then my Kinetic Cleanup is going to be super easy. And then I have Threat Detector for my Info Plays. And then of course the Sword has Tireless Blade, Chain Reaction, and Thresh. Obviously Vorpal Weapon's really good on this too. But I think the clip potential chain reaction is worth having on at all times. And there you go. That is PvP best in slots. Let's look at PvE best in slots. If I did save some of those. Here we have a scout rifle with maximum reload, maximum range, and explosive payload. If you ever kill an anti-barrier champ, you know exactly why this is valuable. Succession with reconstruction, vorpal weapon, and alloy magazine meaning that it's a workhorse in pve you always have a reload when you need it and then if you don't reload for a while reconstruction bumps it up to eight so if you need burst damage in a pinch you have that too seventh seraph car uh carbine um auto loading holster i love on every weapon just to increase my damage output total but it's also a seraph weapon so it makes war mine cells this isn't a perfect roll but it gets the job done this 7th Seraph Officer Revolver is very close to a perfect roll. It's just missing the Reload Masterwork. But 4th times the charm on Tac Mag, along with Extended Barrel to help that recoil direction. Stab Masterwork to make it very easy to control. You can dump a lot of bullets into a boss, and if it's Anti-Barrier Hand Cannon, 4th times the charm, time payload for Overload. It 
it's a workhorse again like all these weapons Aikila sniper with triple tap and high impact reserves and seraph rounds this is mostly used for proccing warmind cells on wither horde when you're speed running a very specific gm or a law sector empty vessel warmind cell creation off rage of the warmind or whatever it's called this is lead from gold and disruption break which gives you more kinetic damage on a shield break Lead from gold is super valuable whenever we have artifacts that give you power ammo for free. First in, last out. I do have another one of these that arguably has a better role because you can demolition it, uh, select it, and then extend it mag. So if you sprint swap cancel, you can get a faster effective rate of fire between double slugging. That's going away. So now I don't want extended mag. I want rate of fire. And then I also have tack mag if I do want that magazine bonus. Aikilo's hand cannon. Workhorse again. Four for weapon boss damage. Subsistence for adds. This creates war mind cells and is void. I highly recommend you pick one of these up. It's a great wither horde pairing. Similarly, depending on the artifact, you might need a sidearm. Drop mag. Demo. Surrounded for the damage buff. This 7th era SMG is a consistency workhorse. Just firmly planted. Drop mag for reload. Beating frenzy. And a reload masterwork. It's there for selves and mapping things with firmly planted. Falling guillotine. I don't know if this is the perfect roll, but I'll keep my eye out for a better one. Interference grenade launcher. This is great in Garden of Salvation for mapping the boss and Izanagi canceling. However, with sprint swap cancel gone, the specific rotation might be a little bit different. And you might actually want a handling masterwork on these now. Royal entry. Lasting impression. Auto loading holster. I got all the good permutations of this gun back to back to back, so the stars can align and it can happen, just not with Frozen Orbit for me. I think that covers most of it, so now let's go through the junk. Also, fusion rifles I am saving for tomorrow to test, then I'm deleting what I dislike. So essentially I'm going to tell you why each of these got the boot. Rampage on a bow is cool. But Swashbuckler is cooler. It's really that simple. You're looking on a bow for the fastest draw time possible, and Explosive Head is really good for Overload. This season is Overload. As a result, if you look at my Season 15 PvE loadout, this isn't everything. I think I want to use more blinding tubes, but I'm going to take these just for the first day. We'll see how it goes, what else the artifact has, and then I'll retweak this depending on like if it has Overload grenades for arc classes or something like that, then I will maybe remove an anti-barrier arc weapon since I'll just be using an arc subclass or something. You understand what I'm trying to say. I just need to see the rest of it before I finalize it. And this bow is absolutely joining the team. This is another Biting Winds with Sympathetic Arsenal and Rapid Hit. So if I'm using as an Augie, well, I mean, I can't use it with as an Augie. That would be the Imperial Needle that I use with as an Augie to get that effect, but... Maybe Borealis is the other one. So yeah, Borealis plus Biting Winds. I get my Ionic Boost with Borealis to increase my damage. And then I use Biting Winds to kill a Trash Mob to reload my Borealis to keep my damage bonus. Pribina I kept for testing purposes to show what a max range rangefinder explosive hand cannon looks like. However, I finally got another one of those and I don't care to test it anymore. The Guiding Sight Scout Rifle, I kept this because it was a stat monster. Iron Gaze is plus 20 aim assist, these naturally have low aim assist. However, there's a Scout Rifle that came out called the Dead Man's Tail that makes me not want to touch any other Scout Rifles. So I don't. The Balagant has a rare perk called Air Assault, gain increased handling while airborne. Even if this perk gets a significant buff in the future and this ends up being the best in slot, I'm not losing sleep over it because again, I'm kind of done holding all the test weapons in the game, crossing my fingers, suffering on vault space and farming. Just want to play the game with what I enjoy. And I already have things that supplement handling. They would seriously have to buff this perk. They'd have to be like, gain increased damage while airborne. I'd be like, okay, Balagan's back on. Blasphemer, I can reobtain this exact role, so I'm just going to delete it since uh, this is a sunset version. 
Pillager is one of the coolest SMGs aesthetically, and for that reason, I kept it kind of as a trophy weapon, but because it also had a really cool perk set here. I'm deleting it because, as we learned more about SMGs, it turns out that zoom is the most important stat, and multi mock is the same archetype, but with more zoom. Bite of the Fox. Notice it says a test weapon. This has 100 range and firmly planted and opening shot. But according to a conversation in the Massive Breakdown podcast with Chris Proctor, a bungee dev, 100 range stat on a snipe is max accuracy anyway. And so what is improving my accuracy going to do when it's already at 100? I could keep this around to test, but I do think in the future similar roles will be available and I can always ask on Twitter to see if anybody has anything similar. Although, I don't think we'd get any conclusive evidence of testing because it's so hard to aim one exact pixel more than another sniper rifle to see what bends bullets the hardest. Or we'd have to do a series of 10,000 jump shots without missing with a macro to take away human error to then confirm that these perks do nothing in a 100 range um, Bite of the Fox would probably perform the same with and without these perks. So for that reason, I'm deleting it. I don't need to test it. I'll take Chris's word on it. Time payload on a 120. Test weapon, gone. Bastion. Okay, now some of y'all thought I was being too harsh on this weapon. You're right. You're right. This is a personal vendetta against this weapon for the personal reasons. We're going to go to my PvP setup here. Bastion used to be here. Why did I keep Bastion in my inventory? Yes, there was that stars align clip where I can kill three people on three different sides of me. That's one reason to use it alone. The real reason is because if I got a team of three titans, and I know that every time I kill one of them, they're going to put up a barricade and start reviving their teammate, I need Bastion. I need Bastion to destroy that barricade, destroy that glacier crystal, and then give me a one-shot kill behind whatever remains. With the current nerfs to Bastion, that's not happening. The first two break the barricade, the third doesn't kill, I get slug shotted. That's how that's going to go down. I don't think it is a top, top broken contender anymore. All of these weapons right here in my inventory, you can make a case that every single one of these weapons is OP. And for that reason, they're my daily driver PvP loadout. I think Bastion gets slightly kicked out of that tier because it's losing overall consistency. Honestly, Bastion shouldn't have got double or triple nerfed. It should have just been one of those three. Cold Front. Yes, it's going to also be good in PvE, but I also feel that Arbalest runs a similar purpose. And I'll pull out Bastion again if I need to. I don't really care to build a kill counter on this. Cold Front is a rare weapon because it comes from the Christmas event. However, it's 13 zoom. I don't really value it. Uh, let's just stay in alphabeticals here. Hip fire opening shot, but it doesn't have max range, and as we know, accuracy type. So, yeah, I really don't care to keep that, even for going for hip fire clips when I have the dead man's tail. Also, the occluded finality has potential to maybe even have a better role for that sort of thing. My voice is dying here. Okay, blasphemer, hip fire opening shot. If I had a max range. Sight there, I might consider this with a Fidian aspect just because it would be hilarious. You throw an Icarus grip on here and then you can fly through the air hip firing. Maybe on Lion Rampants, this would be nuts. However, if I'm going to hip fire, I'm going to use Dead Man's Tail, which means that it needs to be a first in, last out. Not a Blasphemer. I saw a depth. This one is max handling, like true max handling. Like the Frozen Orbit, getting a good roll is terrible. And an adept weapon is even more terrible because you have to fight through cheaters to claim your roll. So there's a chance that I never see this again. And I, even worse, I never see one uh, with Vorpal Weapon because Celerity is guaranteed every time. So, comparative, I have an ISOL, firmly planted opening shot. It's fantastic on that archetype. I have a snapshot opening shot. I don't think you can get that combo anymore. And then I have a snapshot Vorpal weapon. 
realistically, for me to value this sniper rifle, Snapshot needs to get nerfed. And so, as a content creator, I want to keep this because, well, what if Quick Draw get or what if Snapshot gets nerfed on snipers? Well, then I'd have a great sniper rifle ready to use. I don't think it warrants the vault space when there's exotic options, exotic snipers that don't have snapshot that I think I would value more in that world where snapshot is gone. Even is an Augie's burden. I will just refarm this if that day ever comes. I'm strongly doubtful that they nerf snapshot, even though I think that would help a lot with how oppressive snipers are. Half down. High impact auto, I don't like autos, it's gone. Yep, I said it, I'm doing it. Sidearm, I can refarm this anytime I want within an hour, I'll just go get it then. Loud Lullaby, I'm deleting because my Kremil's Dagger just overall feels better for a similar purpose. No Turning Back is a trophy weapon, you cannot pull it out of collections, it is the best feeling bow to me. I feel like I cannot miss with this. This is my laser bow, the one I use with all my trace rifles. It's amazing. However, I'm committing to going for the goaded biting winds, which will edge this out, and I might as well get rid of this right now and just go for the biting winds anytime I have some downtime when I'm waiting on somebody for PvP or something like that. Spare rations, multi kill clip. That's an extremely rare perk combination, but it does roll on Impactor and Iron Banner. And I'll probably get one or ask to borrow an account if I ever want to use this again. 10 paces, slide shot, opening shot. While this is an amazing combo, I do think guns that have come out recently like Fatebringer edge it out even when you are sliding. And yes, there is a slide nerf, but I can live without this one. I have other weapons that fulfill that same purpose, like for example, Heritage plus a slide shot waking vigil. Feel like it does it a little bit better. Time War Inspire for testing purposes. This is a max range with iron reach and under pressure to show what the damage drop off and recoil would look like. However, I don't like it. I like the stability version better. This is a min max range and stability roll. Slide shot to negate the slide penalty as well as iron grip for stability for less recoil compensation when burst firing. Got Ricochet and High Caliber Rounds. It's just overall a monster. So that is why I'm deleting this gimmick roll. And yes, there's someone out there who's like, I can handle this recoil, no problem. Well, kudos to you. But if I want that kind of range, I'm just going to use the Messenger with a very similar setup. 51 meter 2 tap, by the way. Toil and Trouble, this is my free-to-play accounts role and a great test weapon. But I also don't need it because I have other weapons that fulfill this just as well. And I can ask around. The reason I'm keeping this Dust Rock Blues for testing purposes is because it's a kinetic precision with both rifled and full choke. This is a perfect weapon to show future patch changes or how perk interactions work. This full choke to will and trouble, chances are Banshee will show it again. I'll get another one that just has max range and full choke or rifled barrel. It's just such a common gun. And then Astral Horizon also has a chance to reappear. And that's the one that people really want to know the difference on. So yeah, I'll just delete it because I don't need it to make a video easier in the future. Aikilos SMG, this is a trophy weapon with a unique burn. Risk Runner isn't as much of a threat anymore, so I'm just deleting it. Uh, this had tournament placings, like a lot of people used Aikilos SMG and Old Fashioned or Dire Promise. There was a punchy meta around these guns, a Wormhust meta around these guns. It wasn't really fun. This is a double perk Aikilos, but it's missing the magazine perk and the reload masterwork, so I'm just going to delete it and maybe carry some extra Aikiloses later. I thought this would save me vault space, but I never really ended up using it. Hero's Burden, not enough zoom. This could have potentially been a goat roll. Drewski actually has a perk for perk perfect roll, and I'm super jealous of that. He has like under pressure kill clip with max zoom, max range. Occluded Finality. Cool guy recommended I try this gun on mouse and keyboard, go for some hipfire kills, and he's right, it's super consistent. Though after hearing what Chris Proctor said, I think I know the magic sauce to this weapon and I need to get 100 range, 
with any sort of um, consistency perk on that, like hip fire or something. I don't know what exists, but I'll find it in the future. I don't care about it right now. I don't snipe on the zoom. I will care about the zoom when a 58 zoom kinetic comes out. All right, let's talk about sidearms overall. Sidearms on mouse and keyboard are not consistent. SMGs are extremely consistent. SMGs power creep certain sidearm archetypes like the dead man walking right here. Even if you're a perfect shot, there's a chance that like a lightweight or an aggressive SMG does the exact same job better with better damage drop off. The only reason you use these is for controller aim assist to feel easier. But if you're playing at like the top level, you're going to use what gives you the most reward, even if it does take a little bit more effort, like with the SMG. So you're just going to use the SMG. Motion to vacate, unique burn, deleting. Prophet of Doom, not really good enough, kept it for testing, deleting. Wishbringer, a real OG trophy weapon at the competitive playlist. This is a shame to delete, but unfortunately, it just doesn't have any competitive roles left, so I'm deleting it, and I value some of my other trophies more. Age old bond, Vex is going to clap this thing, I'm deleting it, and I'll reobtain it anytime I want one. Bottom dollar, this is a weapon like Frozen Orbit that if you see a certain roll of it, you will never see it again. However, Rampage and Outlaw is overrated on this archetype now that the damage has changed, and I don't like it that much, so I'm deleting that roll. First and last out, power crap by my own version after the sprint cancel swap. Frozen Orbit, Killing Wind will make the follow-up shots better, will make the handling overall better, but I just don't value Killing Wind on a sniper rifle. Aikilos SMG. Disruption Break, Pulse Monitor. I think I have another that's very similar to this. Yeah, Disruption Break with Threat Detector. And Alloy Magazine. While I would prefer Seraph Rounds on any of these, Pulse Monitor has some merit in GM Nightfalls, but I think I'm just going to run Threat Detector and choose when I reload rather than try to play that dangerous game of getting hurt on purpose. Last Perdition, Firmly Planted Rampage. Did I pronounce it right? Whatever, I've been talking forever. Uh, yeah, this one, it's still very, 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 very good, but I think this Geon 7 does what I need it to a little bit better. Motion to Compel, Unique Burn, Scout Rifle, Dead Man Tail exist. Yes, Kinetic versus Energy, but Dead Man's Tail is so good as a Scout Rifle that I will do whatever I have to to make it work. Nation of Beast. This is opening shot kill clip. Now keep in mind that kill clip is not a unique perk anymore on this uh, energy slot. You can get it on Waking Vigil, and I do have that on Waking Vigil. The reason I'm deleting it on Nation of Beasts, even though it's an arguably better weapon with opening shot, is that I have a Waking Vigil with Warp a weapon that I can swap to on the fly, and if I can get the roll to feel the exact same, which I do have it because of the Masterwork Sight combo, and the same perk, Killing Wind, I would rather have the two guns work interchangeably than have a gun do both jobs adequately. Rather specialize two different guns than get one that does each of their job okay. Hope that makes sense. Nox Cordius used to be a tournament staple. This was the anti acreus gun. I kind of want to try it out tomorrow, but I'll just pull it from collections. This can no longer be a trophy for me. Occluded Finality. I wish this had ricochet rounds. Polaris Lance. This no longer, this was also a tournament staple for me at least. Having infinite ammo and PvE is now a thing, so this doesn't have as much merit for EXP farming. In PvP, it's power crept by the Dead Man's Tail, and I realistically see myself using no other scout rifle than Dead Man's Tail. Posterity needs max range and killing wind to be relevant in PvP. This was a PvE weapon, however, I am starting to acquire arc hand cannons that do their job much better. Like this slide shot waking vigil that gets three bullets per slide. Reckless Oracle. I'm deleting this because I don't like auto rifles. This also rolls with auto loading holster. And if I want that roll for a specific uh, season of PVE, then I'll go get it. It arguably would be really good this season. But I don't care. PVE is easy. I will be slightly less efficient at grinding but have more vault space. And just be overall happier that I don't have to constantly swap items between my characters. 
Retail tail with surrounded that was just for testing. A seventh Seraph shotgun with Vorpal weapon. I'm going to delete this one because it does not have full choke, although Vorpal weapon is amazing. I have a max range swashbuckler shotgun. And I feel like I'd be using that over this every single time. If this had full choke, I would keep it. Seventh Seraph with hip fire and Vorpal weapon. I used to keep this for when Arbalist was a menace on console when I ran console cards. Just to have a weapon to help clean up supers, and this did amazingly. But I have other Vorpal weapons now. Like this Waking Vigil. Shira's Wrath. This is a tunnel vision kill clip with full bore and accurized rounds and a stability mastery. I know, I know, I know, I know. In some of your eyes, this is the best roll you have ever seen of this gun. But feast your eyes on this. Handling masterwork, extended barrel, or hammer forge rifling, right? I can get that 100 recoil direction and tunnel vision. So I have two of the most lethal variants of Shayera's Wrath banked and ready to go. Unfortunately, Shayera's Wrath is getting a little bit power crept by the Vex Mytho class, so I won't be using it as much as I should. It really is going to take something like Wither Horde to make me care about Shayera's again. I like using Wither Horde to line up angles in PvP. Maybe we get a new map where Wither Horde is really fun to use it on. I don't know. Stochastic Variable. Now you figure, after an entire season of grinding, that I might stumble upon a roll that is competitive. I didn't, so it's getting deleted. The Keening. Drang has better zoom. Last Dance. Again, I, I don't care about sidearms. Yes, this is Threat Detector and Kill Clip, two of my favorite perks together along with high caliber rounds. I'm not using a sidearm. Sorry, Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves. This would have been a really fun build to purposely put my recovery as low as possible to keep my critically wounded uh, area as long as possible. But the thing is, if I'm going to be using that, I think I'm going to use like cryosthesia or sturm or something you know it's it's like i can go get something a replacement of this a lot easier than i can the mechaneers so i'm keeping the mechaneers i'm getting rid of all the sidearms maybe i'll ask around to see if somebody has a similar combo tommy's matchbook this at one point was my top three favorite weapons the meta around Tommy's has changed so much that Tommy's underperforms and Dead Man's Tail now exists. Dead Man's Tail, every problem that I ever had with Tommy's, this gun fixes. To the point where no matter what energy or kinetic pairing, I'm making Dead Man's Tail work. Sorry Tommy's matchbook. You were a really cool gun. Truth Teller. Multi-kill clip blinding nades. Uh, the reason that I'm deleting this one but keeping the others is just because I can't get blinding grenades and concussion nades or proxy nades on the same gun. So sometimes I need to keep the two same face perks. But uh, I think this one's just redundant. That's all. Twilight Oath for testing. Opening shot box breathing. This pretty much takes every negative away from Twilight Oath. Sorry, Drew. I'm deleting this one because I don't snipe on 35 zoom and I'll get the new Twilight Oath if I want to use it. Xeno class, this has redundant, uh, or perks that work against each other, right? Hip fire and one two punch and full choke don't really go together when the shotgun meta wants me to aim down sides. Reginar, this is a unique burn. Solar, we called it the bazooka, has a green shader on it. It was really fun to use in year one, so I kept it. That reminds me of so many good memories with friends. I'll take a screenshot of it, then I'll let it pass. Swarm of the Raven. This memory interdict might not have as better uh, boss damage, but I just like the frame and perk more, so I'm keeping it. Keeping the interdict. Deleting the swarm. Commemoration. This is a PvP machine gun. I'm just going to delete it and maybe get a correct measure another day. Hammerhead. I used to pair it with Fighting Lion. Delete it. And then there's a couple odds and ends exotic armors that I marked. I'll worry about that next season. The point is, with all these weapons gone, I'll have a lot more vault space. Uh, let's get to deleting. Uh, let me think of how I want to do this. So, let's equip the accrued redemption. And then take everything out that is not junk. Let's only transfer junk. Are you curious what my trophies are? The OG Redrix's Claymore. The Not Forgotten. 
the fell winter slide yes i can delete fell winters but 2700 kills this is a gun that i would bring up just talking about how things should drop in destiny fell winters was one of those things this helped pvp so much because you no longer had to worry about rng on a shotgun it was amazing trader's fate pre-order bonus stampede is a risk runner gun the button is a gun that i, I honestly think single digit people have at this point so i'm keeping it this i will get this to 10,000 kills over the next few years mark my words this is a competitive bite of the fox i used for whenever it came out that entire season fighting lion combo literally can't be replaced for me so i'm keeping it and yeah that's oh it's a tara gaze too i had an entire row of tatara i spent months of my life farming for a snapshot kill clip roll with very specific stat setups and i never could get it yes those frames on reload mattered to me because killing uh multiple people it would come up and then they sunset it i'll never forget that so for that reason i keep the tatara gaze all right let's get back to deleting uh thank you all for listening to the explanations and watching so far hope this uh helps you on your own journey of deleting stuff Uh, let me make sure I have the right binds. I've already come to terms with deleting all this. Like, seriously, it's nothing. Uh, maybe I should have put an exotic there. I just need to remember to delete this crude redemption at the end of it all. So, goodbye, every gun. Y'all served your purpose well. And you're, some of y'all are peeping my stat splits. Yeah, they're pretty sick. Might be saying three intellect. What if I just don't want to play Trials of Osiris? What if I don't want to use my super? What are we at? 46 minutes? Y'all don't say I was stretching the video or anything either because... I have been talking at light speed on this one. Yeah, my thoughts got jumbled a little bit sometimes throughout this video, but... I stayed on target. You can see I did my notes ahead of time. My comparisons were ready to go. Holy sh- I never showed you this true prophecy. This is one of those guns that if a season ago I deleted, y'all would have slapped me. Figuratively. Opening shot's still amazing. Rampage is still okay. But I own Swashbuckler, Killing Wind variants of the Steady Hand. So I value that much more in the modern meta. And although that is an extremely, extremely, extremely rare gun, and I'll never see it again, that's okay with me. Alright, Test Bite of the Fox is next. This might be therapeutic for some of you. Let me know in the comment section. Deleting a Bastion? Sorry. <laughs> Let me throw some exotics on this character now. Just to refill. Reload for the next deletion. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so nice when I start farming tomorrow. I'm sure there's some Bungie employee that watches this kind of video and is like, that's what we wanted you to do the whole time. I'm sorry, Bungie. The balancing is so lopsided sometimes that if you don't keep weapons, you're gonna get clapped in a future meta. It happens all the time. I've given up on auto rifles, so if we have hard light meta 2.0 next season, I'm not prepared. I'm going to be very sad and I probably won't play that season. That's cool with me. Okay, so I think that's all kinetics. I'm just going to throw a bunch of energy weapons and then delete that bow. You might be wondering why I have so many dead man's tails. That's because some of them have snapshot and others don't. I'm trying to collect an identical snapshot and Vorpal weapon combo so I can swap between it as needed. Okay, so then I just delete that bow and we're good to go. So I gotta be very careful here. Allegro and Aachen are Stan. That put down way too many tourney players to delete. 
that those, these two guns made way too many people uninstall the game. So, just so you know, people used to think sniper rifles were bad, and we're like, uh, six bullets versus one rocket? I think we know what we're going with. Okay, so let's equip that sidearm. Spare my trophies. I meant to mention auto rifles. I'll do that after the deletion. Well, hold up. Let me fill my inventory with junk. Then I'll mention auto rifles in this season of PvE. Okay. Is auto rifle. Horror story stays because it's a rare combo with really good perks. Or sorry, rare weapon. It's from a seasonal. Steel Feather stays because Osmosis, Ricochet, and then a perk combo is very good with Wrist Runner. It's also a kinetic. Gnawing Hunger stays because multi. Shadow Price, really hard to get, but this is also a PvE workhorse. It's Arc. I'm trying to keep one auto of each element. I kept Gnawing for Void, Shadow Price for Arc, and Summoner for Solar, and this will be replaced by Arctic Haze at any point I need it because I value uh, Armor Piercing Rounds, which I'm missing here. I don't remember if Arctic Haze can get that. It probably can't. But I'll, I'll just get a replacement auto in the future. Not a big deal. Shadow Price, max range. This does have full bore as well. But I don't need it because of Adeca Adept Icarus Grip. Killing Wind Swash. If there's ever an auto rifle buff, this is going to be extremely lethal. And because it's an Adept, I'm keeping it because it can run a lot of different mods. This is also kind of like Palindrome to the point where I farmed the entire week of Palindrome and I still didn't see my god roll. I'm not deleting a Shadow Price. That is one auto that is way too valuable. Okay. Let's double check that I have no trophies here. Refresh, and then we search for junk again. There are so many weapons. I should mention trivia here. I'm going to show you this, actually. This might be the last time that we ever see it. I'm going to take a screenshot of this baby. Going to take a screenshot of this baby. Some of y'all don't know. Some of y'all don't know what recoil looks like. No recoil compensation. Don't blink. Holy shit, right? This is me trying to control it. I have to like throw my mouse in the other room. That's disgusting. It's terrible, right? I'm going off the table. You don't even get rewarded for hitting all headshots like that. It's not a good gun. I was hoping that it would be buffed one day. And then I'd be showing up to Crucible after practicing Kov Kovacs or Hentai Aim Trainer or something. Just popping all the heads in PvP. Spray transferring on the recoil control. Nope. It just never got good. And I could hold on to this forever. I'll never see another gun like this. But honestly, we're probably going to get something with a perk that helps for that abysmal recoil compensation. It was just cool to keep this to document how bad it was. And now it lives forever on this video. 
one more time for the folks at home. I'm aiming at the water's edge. I am not compensating for recoil whatsoever. Watch this thing rise. It puts the recoil out in the solar system. No joke. That was a joke, by the way. I don't play Kovacs. Oh, that one hurt. That one hurt a lot. I really felt deleting that Wishbringer. So let's see if it auto freshes since I went to orbit. I should add that I also have a retold tail right here to offset that dust rock right there for testing purposes. Content creator's best friend. I love the way the CQC looks too. I did so much work ahead of time too to make this video short. Guess it was destined to be an hour long. My fault. Hope you've enjoyed it though. I appreciate you being here if you're this far. Is that everything? I had a really good season with Tommy's matchbook. It's crazy how much I like hip fire in this game. Okay, let's get rid of the dead man walking. Just throw one gun that I know I'm always going to keep equipped here. Uh, I would never delete a shadow price, so I'm just going to throw the shadow price on. Months in the forge. I repeat, months in the forge. Now you get to learn how I organize a vault too. Okay, my exotic is Arvalist. What is a weapon that I can never realistically ever see myself deleting ever? I'll just do Code Duello because I know it's my only one. I had to choose between the bazooka or the button. I chose the button. Goodbye, bazooka. Insane. Okay. Throw all exotics. Might be wondering why I keep two tractor cannons. One's 1100. It's uh, titled Raid Day 1. Sometimes you need repulsion without killing an enemy. And also sometimes you need blinding without killing an enemy. I have both those ready to go. I learned my lesson in Vog. Not Vog, um, Last Wish. Hey Cam, why are you traveling to the tower? Oh, you'll see. I turned in 4,000 Vanguard tokens yesterday, and I have a bone to pick with that RNG system. Here were the uh, spoils of yesterday's token turn-in, by the way. Starts with the C, Cold Denial. I got THE Cold Denial. Been wanting this one forever. High caliber rounds, max range, swash, killing wind. Yes, it's really good. I put 73 kills alone uh, across a couple games. was fantastic. But that still doesn't make up for that system. That system's terrible. Why do we even have tokens to begin with if it's just going to be a random drop? 
My postmaster still has some treasures. I'll worry about those next season. Okay. Let's uh, do some quick mental math here. 448, so I can 50. It's 10 per, but only 9 in. So 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. So I can put in all of my armor. Let's do it. I have some year one armor that has scavengers that shouldn't be there. I'm going to retest those tomorrow, just like fusion rifles, and see if they work. If they don't work, I'm just deleting them. So I get even more spaces. I don't think I need to fill these anymore. I just need to see how much space is left. So nine spaces. I kind of like having six each. Let's grab one kinetic, six energy. Perfect. <laughs> now you see I'm uh, ready to go to Shax. You're alive, Guardian. Fight like it. This is so much fun. This feels so rewarding. If only there was a crafting system or some deterministic way. If only I could spend these 450 engrams to guarantee one good roll. This made this so much easier to do. Imagine doing this on having one extra vault space. You'd have to be using your postmaster so carefully. So you might be asking, what does a good crafting system even look like? I am uh, working on a video for that. Explicit purpose. I'm going to compare it to Fantasy Star with how that game respects your time and lets you work towards 100% guaranteed exactly what you want for a build. Destiny's lacking that. If you put in the time, you should get rewarded. If you have the skill, it should expedite the time. This game has countermeasures for a trading system without a trading system. Okay, so why did I keep this? Extended barrel, liquid coils, high impact reserves. I'm deleting that because I have a trinary system. Heating up multi-kill clip. Multi-kill clip cannot naturally roll there. Resilience on the plate. I don't know if I value strength that much. Still going to keep it for now. 1320 helm. I know why I kept that. I'm keeping that for lost sectors. Yes, I own an, an identical pair, but trust me, next season when I get to farming lost sectors... I go so fast that I get a chest lockout, meaning I have to switch characters. If I have two identical builds on two different characters, I can just immediately go into the Lost Sector and not change my strategy around and run through it so that I don't get a chest lockout. Under pressure opening shot, does this have max range? Does this get to 100? Let's reference Dim. Eighty-six. I can't do that math because I leveled it up partially. Okay, ninety-four. Four remaining. It's not enough. It can't be one hundred. Okay, so we just learned about that on the frozen orbit. It doesn't do anything. Keep. 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 
I need to sneeze, but I don't want to ruin the video. Just needed to rest my voice for a sec. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, talk about the new season really quickly. Sure, most of y'all clicked off of the video by now, now that the vault cleaning section is done. Consciously optimistic is the word to use, but I've always said that about Destiny seasons. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm worried about the new season. Mark my words, quote me here. It always feels like we take steps towards making the game feel more fair and purposeful. And then there's some wrench thrown into all of the balance, like One-Eyed Mask, that's a perfect example, where it feels like you're punished for playing the game effectively. And that the game is not purposeful. There is nothing to strive for. Eventually, like, a loot system breaks. Or there's too much RNG, etc. I think that they're going... That Bungie is going to make steps towards... Making PvP feel a little more fair. Making the reward structure. And things to strive for feel more purposeful. But I fear that one unchecked balancing thing, one new exotic, one small change in a game mode, etc. It's going to let it all come crumbling down, and here we are, third person peeking with some new mechanic, waiting for our supers to charge. Could happen. If that does happen, I'm, I'm going to warn you guys ahead of time. I'm still going to make Destiny content reluctantly. But I will be focusing my efforts on other games when that happens. So just a heads up there. Other than that, seems like there's a lot of potential for fun. We get the reveal tomorrow. I haven't seen it yet. Um, at this point, as Destiny veterans, we have seen every permutation of what this game has to offer. Doesn't look like they're changing the formula up much because it's so profitable. And for every player like me that quits because of frustration, they get two or three or four or five new players that are fascinated with the world and want even more. I only looked at that because it could be useful this season for PvE. Dude, I want a Vorpal Weapon max range so bad. Maybe I get one of those. Uh, other than that, I think I've said all I needed to say on this video. For the third or fourth time thank you guys for watching y'all are the best hope this was somewhat valuable to those cleaning out their vault i will maybe make another video talking about my new builds going into the next season but at this point i might as well wait for the day of the new season so see y'all then